All right. So just to recap, in the last episode, we learned about how we can link up our design with our code file using these IB outlets and IB actions. Now, this gives us exposure to these design elements in our code file. And in this episode, we're finally going to start coding and start using some of these exposures. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a variable. It's basically just a container that holds data. And we're going to do that just under the class declaration right here. And I'm going to write var, which is the keyword to create a variable. First variable is called random dice index one, and it is of type int or integer. And I'm going to set the value of this container to equal zero for now. So if you look underneath this video, you'll find a Swift cheat sheet that we've created for you guys that allows you to get an overview of how various coding elements are constructed. So firstly, we're going to zoom in on the variable section and I'm going to draw your attention to this line, which is where we create a variable. So in order to create a variable, you use the keyword var, you give your variable a name, and then comes a semicolon and you declare the type of data that your variable is going to hold. Remember that a variable is just a container for data. And then you finally give your variable a piece of data, say a number or some text. And later on, if you decide to change your variable or change the contents, you can just simply use the name of the variable and set it to something new. So let's take a look over here at the different data types or some of the common data types. So int stands for integer, which is whole numbers. Um, then comes floats and doubles. Now both floats and doubles can hold numbers with decimal places. A double simply holds a number with more decimal places. So depending on how accurate you need your data to be, say if you wanted the number of pi to you know 20 digits after the decimal point, then you might choose to use a double, especially for scientific calculations. But if you just need to do some basic decimal point mathematics, for example, to input you know somebody's height in meters or somebody's weight, you know, precise to two decimal places, then a float is probably a better bet. So then we've got the bool, which stands for booleans, which can only hold the values true or false. Then finally, we've got strings, which are essentially strings of characters. So most of the time, that's your text. Although, of course, you can store a number as a string. Um, you just won't be able to do any mathematical calculations with it. So let's go back to our Xcode project for Dicey. Um, now it's your turn to make the next variable. So go ahead. Pause the video and make random dice index 2. It's also a variable. It has data type int and it is also going to be set to zero. All right, so how did that go? If it went well, then it should look something like this. Random dice index 2 is the name. Um, we gave it the var, the var keyword, and then we're going to use a semicolon and give it a type. It's also going to be an integer, and we're going to set the value of this variable to zero as well. Now you can see it's pretty much identical to the um, variable that we created just above it, but it's got a slightly different name. It's the second random dice index. Great. So why do we need these containers called random dice indices? Well, we're going to generate some random numbers between one and six, essentially. So if you think about our dice faces, there's only six possible images that we've got, dice one to dice six. And in order for our um, dice app to work, we need these images to be displayed up on here randomly. So we're gonna create a random number generator, and then we're gonna use that number to pick out a random image so that the user can see their dice on the screen. So the next step is to create this random number, right? So previously we said that you can create a variable and then you can set it at a later stage. That's exactly what we're going to do here. So inside the curly braces for roll button pressed, remember when you press the roll button, everything between this closing brace and this opening brace is where your code will get executed. And that's exactly where we want to create our random number. We're going to use random dice index one, and we're going to set it to equal arc for random 
uniform and we're going to give it an upper bound of 6. Now let's take a look at this line of code. So I'm, I'm taking the random dice index 1 variable, the container, remember, which contains 0 at the moment. At this stage, I'm going to take out the 0 and set it to equal something else. And that something else is a random number generator called arc for random underscore uniform. Now, this is a functionality that gets prepackaged um, into your essentially your Swiss Army knife um, when you import UIKit. So when you import this library of code called UI user interface kit, it includes a whole bunch of code that Apple wrote that allows you um, certain really useful functionalities such as um, creating a random number. Now, if I got rid of this import UI kit, then I won't be able to use most of the things that I'm using. So it is such an important um, piece of tool that we're going to utilize so that we don't have to write, you know, all the code for how image views work or how um, view controllers work, or indeed how to create a random number. Now, randomness exists all around us in the world. But in a closed system, such as a computer that runs on ones and zeros, there really is no true randomness. So we have to create something called pseudo randomness. And that's done using mathematical equations. And these random functions use these mathematical equations and generate numbers that look seemingly random to at least the human eye. And these random functions are really, really useful for us as developers, especially if you're a game developer. Can you imagine playing a game that has no chance involved? So now we've got this arc for random uniform and here we're going to put in the upper bound. And this is basically defining what random numbers we're looking for. By putting in six there, this function will generate random numbers between zero and six minus one. So you'll get zero, one, two, three, four, through to five, but you won't see six. At the moment, it's complaining to me. So the error code says, cannot assign value of type uint32 to type int. Now the problem here, just to translate Xcode into English, it's telling me that this function, arc for random uniform, returns or sends back to me a number that is of type uint32. But my random dice index is of type int, as I declared up here. Now, what is a uint32? It's a different type to an int. It's very similar, but the u stands for unsigned. So it doesn't have a negative sign in front of it, i.e. it can only be a positive number, um, a whole number from the int, right? So unsigned, integer 32. So that's a 32 bit number. And that's just saying how large that number can be. So essentially, the problem that we've got here is a, mis a mismatch of data types. And we can change this by casting. You know how you cast iron from liquid to a different shape? Well, that's kind of similar. What we're going to do is we're going to write int, and we're going to enclose everything that is uint32, namely everything that's of this function, inside this bracket. And we're going to turn the uint32 and cast it into an int. So then Xcode is happy because the left-hand side of the equation is an integer, and the right-hand equation has now been turned into an integer as well. So brilliant, we're done. Now next, you're going to create random dice index 2 and you're going to use the arc for random uniform function and it's also going to generate a number between 0 and 5. All right, so did that work out? Did you end up writing something like this? So remember, we're resetting the random dice index 2 variable that we created at the top of the uh, code file. And we're going to set it to arc for random uniform. And then we're going to set it to a number between 0 and 5. So we're going to put 6 in here. And finally, I'm going to cast this uint32 into an integer. 
Okay, cool. So just to recap, we created two variables that's going to hold the random numbers and then we generated two separate random numbers um, between 0 and 5. So the important thing when coding is that you should really check to make sure that your assumptions are uh, reflected in the results. So let's go ahead and test out our code. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a print statement to print out the result of random dice index one. And we're going to run the app and see what happens. So either command R or just press the play button. So this bit of code should only get triggered if the roll button is pressed and only these three lines should get triggered when that happens. Okay, great. So we've got this showing on the screen. Nothing's happened so far. And we're just going to go ahead and press roll button to trigger these three lines of code. Four. Okay, so now my debug console, the part at the bottom of the screen, just popped up because now it's got an output. Um, and then I'm going to press again. Okay, so looks like it's working, right? It's generating random numbers between 0 and 5. So everything seems to work well, and I can stop my app from running, and I can close the debug area. If you assume that as you're writing code, you're constantly introducing errors into it. Um, now, for some people, this might not be true. You might be really, really diligent. But for most of us, this happens a lot. Um, people create bugs and the bugs get bigger the longer that you don't test your code. If you test it on a regular basis and test all your assumptions as you write them, then um, you're less likely to make mistakes. So in this lesson, we've created two brand new variables gave it an initial value of zero. And then later on, once the roll button is pressed, we change that value to a random number using the arc for random uniform function as tested generates a random number between zero and five. And in the next episode, we're going to talk in depth about variables, constants and data types in Swift. So I look forward to seeing you there. And um, that's all from me.